let's talk about building your own concrete swimming pool. And I mean like a do-it-yourself concrete swimming pool. First of all, concrete pools are kind of like the Cadillac of swimming pools. So it's it's a pretty high goal to reach to achieve to build your own concrete swimming pool. I mean, that is assuming that you're not necessarily like a builder or a concrete worker already. Building a concrete pool would be a pretty big undertaking, pretty much a pretty big undertaking for anybody. Like even if you build vinyl pools for a living, building a concrete pool would be a pretty big undertaking. So definitely there's going to be a bunch of stuff that you're going to have to consider. And that's what this video is. I just want to talk about some of the things that you're going to encounter along the lines of like challenges or technical considerations or decisions that you have to make along the way and surely not an exhaustive list like there's going to be so many things that you need to consider if you decide to build your own concrete swimming pool um, but i just want to talk about some of the more important ones or some of the more common ones because more pools than ever are being built by homeowners or do-it-yourself enthusiasts who are just trying to save some money or, you know, reach for something that maybe they couldn't afford otherwise. You know, having a swimming pool throughout the pandemic was a pretty big advantage. And it really uh, put a big light on the swimming pool industry, or at least it put a lot of pressure on the swimming pool industry um, to continue performing throughout the pandemic uh, when supplies were short, labor's hard to find. It was a pretty tough time. It continues to be a pretty tough time. Uh, material shortages continue to this day uh, in 2022. To making this video and all of that will be stuff you need to consider now when you're building your own swimming pool especially if you're building a concrete swimming pool like i had some clients who were hung up for months waiting for something like a skimmer because you couldn't you couldn't get one you couldn't get any skimmer of any description of any kind and you can't build a pool without a skimmer so i guess you're gonna have to wait and that was definitely a, a part of it but that's not something that's unique to concrete pools that's something that's just unique to building pools in general uh, right now in such a boom period and definitely something that you'll have to navigate but getting back to what is specific to concrete pools let's just pick a place to start here with the interior surface of the swimming pool the interior surface of a concrete swimming pool would typically be tile or tile in a combination of tile and plaster or uh, tile and marsite or uh, a pebble surface. There's a lot of different interior surface options and a lot of them are pretty similar overall. Um, there's also some alternative ones like a uh, roll-on plaster-like product uh, called Cidercrete. And then you have uh, something like a fiberglass torch on surface uh, like EcoSmart or there's a couple of different ones that not EcoSmart, EcoFinish, I think is the name of it. Um, there's a couple of different interior surfaces that you're going to have to look at if you're a do-it-yourselfer up to and including painting. And, and that will definitely invoke a lot of reaction from some concrete pool professionals because a lot of people feel you should never paint a concrete swimming pool. But if you can't tile a pool, if you can't plaster a pool, if you don't know how to apply a fiberglass torch on finish, then you're going to have to find something that you are able to do or you're going to have to find subcontractors. And that's kind of one of the first points here is, what is the interior surface of your pool going to be? Is it something that you have the ability to do yourself? If it's not something that you have the ability to do yourself, will you be able to find subcontractors? Will they be reliable and will they be affordable? Who's going to stand behind the work? Uh, it's one thing if you do it all yourself, but if you start subbing out the different stages, you could experience a pretty significant loss of quality with your finished product. There's I mean, it, there's so much to consider here, and I hope this is stuff that you're all nodding your head thinking, yeah, no, I already know this, this stuff, because if you go to build a concrete pool and you don't know any of this and you're just figuring, well, I'm just going to, yeah, I'm going to tile my pool. It's going to be awesome. Tiling a pool is hard. Tiling a pool is super hard, very time consuming. Um, one of the more uh, nuanced technical processes involved in building a swimming pool and if you do it wrong you are going to pay the price uh that that surface is going to fail and you're going to have spent all that time and all that money for nothing and you're going to have to take it out and do it again and it's going to hurt a whole bunch i see that actually more often than you would think um so this is the first consideration when you're going to build your own pool you should be looking at the interior surface looking at your options considering your options weighing your options 
and you know seeing what you can find in terms of uh available skilled labor in your area to help you or to subcontract how good are these subcontracting people like do they have a lot of reviews do they seem excited to work with you um a lot to consider and that's just just the interior service but we could talk about that all day let's move along uh, i've got a bunch of other videos on like much more in depth on interior surface considerations uh, but that just wants i just wanted to touch on the importance of it and how you really need to be, th be thinking about that even right in the beginning design stages if you're going to build your own concrete swimming pool let's talk about the structure i mean what's more important than the structure if you build a concrete swimming pool and it cracks or breaks or leaks or it never holds water well then i guess you failed and you, you spent an awful lot of money in the process so are you going to bring in an engineer to design a concrete swimming pool for you or are you just going to have a go at it you know see what looks good and then do that or are you going to do some research on the internet and just build according to those plans because I wouldn't build a concrete swimming pool without getting an engineer involved. It's not all that money, much money to get a, a an engineer involved, even one that includes site visits, inspections of the ground, uh, you know, maybe some schematics and stuff like that that you can use to help build the swimming pool. And a lot of people don't do that when they build a concrete pool. They just start building. And it's not the method that I would go, especially if you're if you're doing it yourself, like for sure i get the idea save money save money where you can but there's something to be said about spending wisely if you spend some money wisely you can get help with this build you don't have to do it on your own completely you can bring in like an engineer to help you with critically important things like making sure that you build this this uh shell properly that you use a suitable steel grid um reinforcement grid of substantial thickness and a grid spacing that's close enough together that's going to give you strength that's going to allow for a shell that's going to last a long time because man i can't imagine anything worse than, than doing all this work and having a concrete shell that just cracks and it's something that can be avoided with engineering and it's something that i would highly recommend that you look into doing if you're thinking of going and building your own concrete swimming pool so let's move on to plumbing and there's so much stuff we could talk about in the world of plumbing especially with modern day swimming pools because everybody wants all the bells and whistles let's just pick one thing and that one thing i want to talk about is the main drain suction points they're very important for a number of reasons in concrete swimming pools i just kind of want to highlight this to show you some of the technical complexity that you're dealing with here and the considerations you have to make so you need a main drain you're like yeah i knew that what's the big deal okay first of all did you know you need two main drains you can't have one main drain because one main drain would be an entrapment hazard you need dual main drains and they need to be separated by at least three feet or more and they need to be hydraulically balanced and for Further to that, there's a bunch of special specifications that they need to fall under. Like, I don't know, pick one. So let's say you've de determined your system's going to be 80 gallons per minute. That's how much water is going to be moving through that main drain suction line. And you want to buy some main drains. Each of those main drains has to be able to handle 80 gallons per minute. Did you know that? I don't know if you would have known that or not. And that's based on the idea that what if one of them becomes blocked? Well, the other has to be able to handle the entire flow of the system such that the water velocity remains low enough to be safe. You don't want to have an entrapment hazard. You do not want to be responsible for building an entrapment hazard. And if you're going to build this pool, the onus of responsibility falls on your shoulders to know this stuff. You have to know about entrapment hazards and you have to know you have to know stuff like you can't have a suction line velocity greater than six feet per second in any suction line in the swimming pool. So that's a skimmer line or a main drain line, anything like that. At no point can any of those lines have greater than six feet per second of water velocity. And to give you like a, like a number to that, in an inch and a half PVC, that's like 38 gallons per minute approximately and two inch pvc that's 60 gallons 65 gallons per minute and two and a half inch pvc i think it's about 90 gallons per minute so those are numbers that you're supposed to stay within and exceeding them could be unsafe or is unsafe and all that stuff 
is something that you're supposed to be able to calculate. In fact, you're supposed to have calculated it in advance when you're deciding what pipe size to use and the kind of equipment and your, you know, all of this stuff isn't left to chance when you build a swimming pool or it's not supposed to be. Uh, so that's something that I want to highlight for you is that even just the main drain itself that you're using is a consideration because we didn't even talk about that there's three different styles there's field built sumps where you kind of build a concrete pit and you have the pipes enter in through that pit that that's a style you can build or you can use a a pot style those are kind of the most popular ones where they're like just around like you see the the circle main drains those are the pot style and then you have the newer style which are the channel drains unblockable channel drains and which style are you going to use how do you connect it how many do you need what are the flow rates going to be these are all things you're going to have to figure out and so this is Part of the reason why you hear some people be hesitant when you're like, oh, yeah, I'm going to build my own pool. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, maybe, but m maybe there's more to it than you think. And, you know, when you hire a professional builder, this is the stuff that you're you're getting or you're supposed to be getting anyway when you when you pay these big bucks, because let's face it, man, having a pool built these days is expensive. I mean, it's always been expensive, but right now it's super expensive. Uh, so there's a lot, a huge push, in fact, for people to go their own route. And a big part of that just has to do with the, the delays of scheduling. Like if I gave you a giant duffel bag full of money today and said, get a pool built, you could probably get one built in two or three years because everybody's just booked solid right now. So then there's the idea that maybe if you build it yourself, well, you can kind of get started any time here. So there's a huge push for people to do this, but so many get into it without thinking about it. Like this pool's attached to your home. You don't want to devalue your home. You don't want to attach a nightmare to your home. Make no mistake. Swimming pools are the origin of the term doesn't hold water. If there's any single aspect, one stage of this pool that you do incorrectly, it's not going to hold water. It's going to be as simple as walking outside in the morning and going, seems to be an awful lot of water missing from the pool here. So uh, there's so much that, that you have to consider. We haven't even talked about one of the most important things, waterproofing. What are you going to do for waterproofing for this pool? And don't say plaster because plaster is not waterproof. Concrete's not waterproof. It's a porous substance. And you can just go pour a glass of water on the sidewalk in front of your home and watch that water disappear because concrete is essentially a sponge. So the concrete itself is not waterproof. And if you put a plaster surface on it, or even if you put a tile surface on it, that's not waterproof either because the, all the grout lines are porous and the, the, the plaster material itself is just sand and cement. It's just a mortar product. So again, it's porous in nature, it has a hard trial finish that is water resistant, maybe even highly water resistant, but it's still porous. Like you wouldn't put one on the roof of a hotel and just assume it's not going to leak because I tell you, it's going to leak. When you build a concrete swimming pool, you need to learn about waterproofing systems. Waterproofing systems are one of the more technically challenging, complex areas of building a concrete swimming pool that you need to know about. And if you make the wrong choice here, or worse than that, don't use a waterproofing system like many people actually do, you will probably regret that. Like, I guess maybe not guaranteed, but many, many of the more serious, more unfortunate problems that I see with swimming pools, concrete swimming pools that get built have to do with waterproofing. Like if you fail to use waterproofing or the right waterproofing system, you could buy a quarter million dollars in custom glass tiles and they could all fail. Just, just like that. You use the wrong waterproofing system and maybe it didn't protect a weir wall with water on both sides. And as a result, you had water leached through the wall and it formed calcium deposits and it ca caused all of the glass tiles to fail. And now you got to take them all out. It's like, this is crazy talk. You can't have exposure risk like that. And so you need to know about waterproofing systems. You need to know the difference between something like a membrane system or a cementitious uh, waterproofing system, something that can withstand hydrostatic pressure from one direction versus something that can withstand hydrostatic pressure from two directions. These are very, very important subjects that really you should have at least a working knowledge on if you're going to endeavor to build your own concrete pool. 
because these things are going to come up and it's going to matter. And if you want like some pretty firm guarantees that you're not going to have a total disaster on your hand, you have to be somewhat proficient with these subjects. Um, let me talk about one more, one more simple one that re is responsible for an awful lot of failures of concrete swimming pools. And it has to do with lateral expansion forces from uh, the from concrete, like a concrete pool deck. So if you have a hundred linear feet of concrete, picture like a concrete driveway, and it's a hundred feet long, the difference in temperature that that concrete will experience between winter and summer will be more than a half inch in linear expansion. And so you have to picture if you were to sandwich that 100 linear feet of concrete in between two immo immovable forces and then expose it to this temp temperature differential, it's going to grow at 0.66 of an inch. It's going to grow it and something is going to fail because these this force is like it's an unstoppable force. It's it's not something that any, you know, like something like a pool is super strong, right? If you expose the walls of a swimming pool to lateral expansion forces from a concrete deck that is not isolated from the coping or bond beam of the swimming pool, the, the concrete just expands and breaks the entire swimming pool. You'll get something called deck shear, which is a horizontal crack that runs the length of the wall of the swimming pool. And this is simply just a function of not understanding how to build a pool. The pool must be isolated from the rest of the deck. And that's why pools have coping. Like you've heard of coping for concrete swimming pools. Why is that even a word that you need to know? Because otherwise you just call it the deck. But it's not the deck, it's the coping. The coping is the part of the deck which stands directly on top of the vertical pool wall. So that is something that I would like to, you know, make you aware of right away. When you build a concrete swimming pool, you must isolate the pool from the rest of your backyard because the pool and the ground cannot and will not move at the same rates as the rest of your yard in terms of settling, in terms of uh, thermal expansion. So you use a typically speaking half inch expansion gap around the coping between the coping and the rest of your swimming pool deck and you would fill that with a backer rod and then preferably something like a concrete urethane uh, as opposed to something like people often call it silicone but silicone is kind of a light duty uh, product for this application you want to use a backer rod and a concrete urethane to fill that expansion gap and existing concrete pool owners, that's one of the biggest things that you definitely want to look at for a regular maintenance item is when that urethane gap fails, nobody really notices and you kind of let it go. And that can definitely expose you to some serious damage to your swimming pool. So the expansion joints that you that you need to use for a concrete swimming pool to isolate the pool from the deck, it's such a small thing. It would be so easy for you not to know that. And I see it all the time. People will come to me where the, the, the symptom is you have a finished pool and the tiles are breaking. Why the tiles keep popping off? I think I can maybe see a hairline crack running under there. What's going on? Well, what's going on is you didn't isolate the swimming pool from the deck. The deck heats up. There's lateral expansion force. It has no choice but to break the walls and push the walls in on the swimming pool, visibly indicated by the crack in the tile or tiles falling off. That is a real bummer when that happens. Now, hopefully, you're going to be able to avoid that and some of these other problems that I've talked about. If you found this, this information helpful, please be sure to like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And you can check out my website, swimmingpoolsteve.com.